34-year-old Hilda Garola was leaving her husband of 14 years, 38-year-old Luis Pardo. She didn't want to be with him anymore, that she didn't feel like the love was there anymore, that his character had changed so much, and that she just didn't want to do it anymore. Her family says on Tuesday, Garola and her three children were moving out of their Balch Springs home off Eric Drive. Just before all of her belongings were out, police say Pardo killed her. Griselda Garola Giannis, the victim's sister, says one of their sisters who was there witnessed the attack. She got frustrated because he kept telling her, hey, come inside and get your shoes. Come inside and get the shoes. She went inside and got the shoes, and unfortunately, he pulled her in between the washer and dryer that's located in their kitchen. and between the washer and dryer, just pushed her back and started stabbing her to death. Stabbed at least 14 times, according to police. He did do all of this in front of their three-year-old son and my seven-year-old nephew. Griselda Garola Giannis says the sister who witnessed it tried fighting off Pardo. By scratching at him, punching him, hitting him as best as she could. Pardo took off before police arrived, but they don't think he's in North Texas anymore. Luis's pickup was recovered in El Paso but it was unoccupied. Pardo is not a U.S. citizen. There's fear he might be in Mexico. He does have family in Zacatecas, Mexico. The couple's children, girls ages 12 and 10, and a three-year-old boy, not only lost a mother, but have an on-the-run father. Out of nowhere, just murder somebody that you cared so much about. Initially, Garola's family says she left her and her kids' belongings at the home and was starting fresh in Fredericksburg in Central Texas. She came back to Balch Springs not knowing what would happen to her. She didn't want to go, but he kept texting her and bothering her like, hey, come get your stuff, come get your stuff, or it's all going to be thrown away. Dallas police announced an arrest for the murder of a Dallas man shot and killed while chasing down truck thieves. Marco Ramirez was shot and killed last week in South Dallas. His family says a group of thieves stole his dad's pickup. Dallas police say gunfire was exchanged and Ramirez was killed. Fox Force Peyton Yeager live in Dallas with more on the story. Peyton. Steve and Dallas police say fingerprints left on the stolen truck are what led. That's what led investigators into making an arrest. Dallas police say they're still looking for three more people, three additional suspects, two men and a woman. Now this afternoon, I spoke with the victim's family, and they tell me they are spending this Thanksgiving week preparing for a funeral. His face. I recognize his eyes. Like as soon as I saw his eyes, I knew that was him. I knew immediately that was him. When Carla Ramirez saw this mugshot, terrifying memories came flooding back. 30-year-old Alejandro De Leon is now charged with the murder of her older brother, 24-year-old Marco Ramirez. <laughs> One week ago on November 14th near I-30 in Barry Avenue in East Dallas, Carla Ramirez woke up at 4 a.m. to her neighbor's dogs barking. Carla looked out to see multiple suspects breaking into her father's red Chevy pickup parked out front. Nearby surveillance video shows the thieves pushing the stolen red pickup with their own white Chevy truck. <laughs> Carla jumped in her vehicle to chase after them. Her brother Marco was right behind her in his truck. Carla says she caught up to the suspects a few blocks away and confronted them. That's when the thieves ditched her dad's truck and took off. I hit him with my truck and after that I saw them leave and I, I was still really mad and I just went after them still. Ring doorbell video shows the suspect speeding by, followed by Carla on their tail. That's whenever I was on the phone with my brother and I let them know where they were getting home, going towards. And I told them that we could block them in and that's whenever my brother comes from the other side of Perry and I come from the other side of Perry and we blocked them in, but unfortunately it just didn't go good from there. Dallas police say there was an exchange of gunfire. Carla Ramirez witnessed her brother being fatally shot the suspects left the scene. Tuesday, flowers and candles are still left behind. I guess at some point they shot at me too, which I didn't notice. According to an arrest warrant affidavit Fox 4 obtained on Tuesday, detectives say fingerprints on the front hood of the stolen truck matched Alejandro De Leon's in the database. Dallas police didn't disclose how De Leon was taken into custody with the investigation ongoing, only saying he was booked into the Dallas County Jail on November 17th, 
three days after the murder. I need justice for for my brother. I need all of them caught. Mm -hmm. I need all of them caught, even though it's still not going to bring us any type of satisfaction. We just want them out, out of the streets. And Steve, according to public records, De Leon does have a lengthy criminal history dating back a decade. He's been in and out of prison for drug possession, multiple vehicle thefts, and aggravated assault. Back to you. All right, Peyton Yeager outside Dallas Police Headquarters. Peyton, thank you. Duncanville police need help identifying the gunman who targeted a man outside his home. Family members say he had just made a trip to the bank and was likely followed home. Fox's Amelia Jones is live with details and surveillance video. Amelia. Yeah, Blake, the victim, 34-year-old Sebastian Avila, is still in the hospital recovering tonight. His family told me they believe the two armed suspects watched him cash his paycheck, then followed him home. Home surveillance video shows the moment two armed suspects in hoodies and masks walk through a front yard on Linkwood Avenue in Duncanville. The gunman opened fire and hit 34-year-old Sebastian Avila twice in the back. It just happened so quick that we don't, we didn't know how to handle everything. The suspects ran away. Avila's brother tried to catch them in his truck, but didn't. A good Samaritan helped Avila until police and EMTs got there. The family told Fox 4 the shooting damaged his lung and liver. It has impacted everybody. The family believes the shooting was targeted. They believe the two suspects followed Avila home after he cashed his paycheck at a check cashing business. The family says the suspects drove a red Dodge Challenger and parked a few houses away. You could hear him telling him, you know, where's the money at? Meaning that they knew exactly what they had, that they had just cashed their checks. Duncanville police have not confirmed it was an attempted robbery. They did confirm a shooting happened Friday evening on Linkwood Avenue. I mean, there's been robberies, but never any violence like this. And it's just very sad and scared, especially with all the young kids living there. And that's where uh, you're supposed to feel safe. Avila has a one month old baby at home. The family wants to raise awareness so another family doesn't have to experience this. If you feel you're getting followed, do not pull into your driveway. Do a couple of turns. Just please be aware of your surroundings. Duncan Phil police told Fox 4 they are going to send out more information on the investigation and shooting in the next few days. If you know anything about the shooting or you recognize the two gunmen in the video, you're asked to contact the Duncanville Police Department. Blake, back to you. All right, Amelia, thanks. Dallas police released video of the tense and dangerous moment a murder suspect opened fire on members of a police task force. <laughs> So this happened last week when officers went to a Northeast Dallas apartment building to arrest a man wanted for a murder last month. More than a dozen rounds were fired at them. An officer was hit in the leg. Fox Force David Centendry is here with more of the video plus 911 calls from inside the apartment. David. Yes, yeah, Stephen, today we learned there were people hiding in the apartment who were on the phone with 911 while the murder suspect was shooting at officers. Let's go, Jordan. Come a capital out. murder suspect, 20 year old Jordan Owens, is served a warrant at an apartment near 635 and Skillman in Northeast Dallas last Thursday morning by the U.S. Marshals North Texas Fugitive Task Force. Body camera footage shows officers shouting commands for a few minutes. I want to see hands when this door opens. Officers prepare to force entry as no one appears to be opening the door or cooperating. The task force is met by gunfire, allegedly by Owens, who they are trying to arrest. There's an exchange of gunfire. Officers take cover. Anybody? Senior Corporal Edgar Morales is shot in the calf. Footage shows Morales walking with a slight hobble. This suspect had already shown he had no regard for human life wanted for capital murder. 
At some point, Owens, the suspect, was also shot. Owens exited the apartment and was given orders to surrender. He did not comply and went back into the apartment, broke out a window, and started to throw items out of the apartment window. Officers saw Owens with a handgun both inside and outside the apartment. Eventually, officers entered the apartment. Owens, shown here in a previous mugshot, was taken into custody. He was armed with an illegal weapon. With a modification, we and our law enforcement partners work to take off our streets daily. The Glock switch, as you've heard me say before, small device that allows a semi-automatic weapon to fire automatically in seconds. Owens fired more than 15 rounds in that doorway at our officers and then an additional six at some point during the confrontation. During the shootout, a man and woman also in the apartment called 911. They safely made it out. So now we're just in the closet laying down. Okay, just stay down in the closet. Just stay in there, okay? Just hold on. He's shooting at them. He's shooting at them. Who is he? What's his name? What's his name, ma'am? Owens's capital murder warrant is from a deadly robbery off Forest Lane on October 16th. 23-year-old Chiquavion Ross was killed. Chief Garcia says two other suspects in the murder investigation remain at large. This suspect is a type of dangerous, violent criminal this task force comes into contact with on a regular basis. Officer Morales, who was shot in the calf, was treated and released. The suspect, Owens, is stable at a hospital. The Dallas County District Attorney's Office will investigate this officer-involved shooting. Now, regarding the other people in the apartment, police did not reveal their relationships to the shooter. Steve, Heather, back to y'all. All right, David Centenary. David, thanks. Dallas police say they found the car involved in a hit-and-run accident that injured a five-year-old boy, but no one has been arrested yet for the accident that put the boy in the hospital for the past several days. Fox Force Peyton Yeager is in the neighborhood where the hit-and-run happened with a reaction from the boy's family tonight. Peyton? Steve, and that hit-and-run crash happened just feet away from this elementary school off Timber Glen Road. Now, the child who was hit, he was walking from the school to a nearby recreation center with his older brother. That recreation center is less than a mile away. And today, Dallas police offered an update for us. They tell us they found the suspect vehicle, but not the driver yet. And they say they're one step closer. There's a lot. Um... A lot to process. Uh, when I saw Christian, though, I was like, okay, he's alive. Rachel Coxon is extra thankful this year. Her number one priority, having all five of her children home and healthy. Christian's okay. You know, Christian's alive. Um, nothing seriously is wrong with them, but this person is going to be sitting at a Thanksgiving table with their family, you know, knowing that they hit a child. Back on November 10th, Kotzen's youngest child, five-year-old Christian, was struck by a car near President George Bush Turnpike in Marsh Lane in Dallas. The driver didn't stop. Christian and his older brother, nine-year-old Matthew, were walking from their elementary school to the Timber Glen Recreation Center. The route, less than a mile through a neighborhood. Kotzen got the call from a witness while driving home from work. I hear Matthew screaming and it was just, um, I just felt hopeless, you know, just, um, I've never felt that way before. Christian was rushed to the hospital. Luckily, no broken bones. The kindergartner was left with cuts and bruises on his body. Christian is now fully recovered. But right before Thanksgiving, Dallas police announced a crucial update. A day of hope, you know, a day of, uh, Justice is coming. Dallas police had previously released photos of the suspect car they were looking for, hoping the public would help them find it. Wednesday, police announced they located the gray Mazda sedan, but didn't disclose how or where they found it, only saying detectives are working to identify the driver. Kotzen, hoping the driver will come forward. I don't understand the, like what, how you could do that, you know? Um, Kids walk down that street every day. Um, they go to, you know, to the wreck or home, and it's just like you saw the children out and you didn't stop. I get accidents happen, you know, um, but you know what you did. 
And that hit and run took place so close to this elementary school. You know, parents witnessed it, children witnessed it, some school administra administrators rushed over to Christian's help. Now, Dallas police, I spoke with them over the phone this afternoon. They're still asking for the public's help, even though the car has been found. If you have any information about the driver in this case, you're asked to call Dallas police.